Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about WebAssembly and we are going to use Rust. So WebAssembly, I looked into this a few years ago and there has been a lot of development until now. There have been a lot of changes, but we're gonna start with looking at a simple Rust example for WebAssembly where we just use the native features of WebAssembly. So let's jump over here to my code. And here you see I have a little bit of a package, a crate, and it's just a CDWLI um, lib. So nothing strange there. And then we go over to my little function here. I have a summation function that will take two integers and give me an integer back. And in WebAssembly, you have just the native types of integers and floats. There is no strings or not even Boolean, I believe. It's just those simple types and very simple uh, operations, just as in assembly. So you don't have that much functionality in assembly either. So WebAssembly is mirroring assembly very well there. But with just these simple operations, you can build very complicated things. So that's really nice. If we go over to my index.html here, I have this little code down here. It's just a fetch of the WebAssembly that I've built. I get a response back. I will return that array buffer or from that response, put those bytes into an initiation function here. And this will instantiate a new object. And up here I can have imports. I can say that some Java script functions should be available in my WebAssembly. So that feature is actually there. And then I get a result, which is my actual instance. Uh, and I will fetch that instance. And in that instance, I will look at the export, what this module exports, and I will summarize two uh, values here. Let's take something else, but let's set seven there, for instance. And we have container, that container is up here. So that's my return value. If we jump over to a command prompt here, I have a command that I ran earlier. So this is cargo build. So we will build this cargo with a target of WebAssembly, 32 bits. I don't think there is a 64 bits yet. Unknown, unknown. So that's the target. And that's something that you will do rust up, install webasm32-unknown-unknown uh, in order to get that on your system. So when we run that, it will build and give me some result here in my target under the webasm. 32 unknown unknown, and there we have this debug version, which is my WebAssembly. If I run it with release, I, it will be more compressed and I can run it as a release instead. If we jump over here and take the other command I run here, I just start a Python server with HTTP. You can use whatever HTTP server that you have. And if we have a jump over to our web browser here and reload, we will get the result 11. So that was very simply how to run Rust as a web assembly in your browser. Not that much to it because we have come a long way to instantiate and actually working with WebAssembly. So much of the functionality is already in the browser. It's already for you to use. But there is some people that want to do even more with WebAssembly. You want to use strings, you want to use arrays, you want to use a lot of different things, and you want to make it as simple as possible. And there is a standard for this called WASE, uh, that is they are working on that you can actually interoperate with different languages in WASM. You can actually run WASM modules on your machine as native code instead of running in the, it in a browser and so on. So there is a lot of work going on there. Uh, but there is a project called Web um, WASM Bind that actually can uh, go through and create these bindings that you need in order to 
uh, get your project running with more functionality and more types. So let's close those and open this uh, cargo toml over here. So wasm bind gen that will generate the bindings you need. And you see the this example here is it a hello world example which is built by the developers of wasm bind and it's not that different from my file. It's very similar. And if we look into the uh, source here you see that they have just had this prelude up here for the wasm bind and then we have some uh, added uh, attributes here so they have said that you have some external c function here called alert and we all know there is an alert function in javascript and that ex then uh, external C function takes a string. We know that. We also have down here a greet function uh, with a name string that takes this and formats it and adds a name to this hello and then name. And uh, it runs the alert. So it takes a string in and then uh, runs a command using a string. If we go over and look at the, our package JSON here, this is a webpack script and it has this Wasm webpack plugin and so on, an HTML server plugin and, and a lot of different things. And this actually enables you to run your Wasm with webpack, uh, Wasm pack and it will package and build your cargo file for you. You can run uh, cargo build here and create the uh, package that you need to run, but you can actually use Webpack and this plugin in order to build your system as well. And if we look at this Webpack here, we see that we have an HTML Webpack plugin, the Web uh, Wasm plugin here. We say that we want to create a uh, uh, create directory is the current directory, and uh, yeah, so it's not that much in this example. It's uh, pretty simple. Uh, but it's just a hello world example. We look at this JSON here, it has this import package of Rust, so it, I think the uh, Wasm was built here, yeah, so you have the Wasm file in this package and then you have an index file that gives you that Wasm functionality, so it builds a package for you that you can use later on. And then we just have this when we get everything back, we do a greet with Explorer and explorers and we catch any errors. So let's uh, go over to a terminal again here and then run npm run serve. I actually ran npm run build first, so it built the uh, native um, or the uh, production ready build. And the reason I did that was the run serve did not give me that much information of the build process. If we run the build, it will tell you that it's installing Wasm um, uh, pack and it's compiling your cargo crate and so on. So you knew that you had some progress. Otherwise, if you just run serve and then go to the web page, it says, I'm doing stuff. Just wait, I will be back to you when I have a result of this. And it took a while, so uh, it was something that I didn't really want to wait for. <laughs> and as you see here, now that you have run it, it does a lot of compilation, but it's very quick to get up and running. And if we go over to our web browser here and change to 8080, we get this uh, little uh, pop-up here, this alert, hello explorers. So what it did here, as I told you earlier, is it ran the greet function in the web assembly and then we had imported the uh, alert function into the web assembly and said this function alert is available for you to use and then because we have used this wasm bind we can use strings so we can send strings in and strings out to this function and run it in the web browser. So this was what I wanted to uh, cover today. 
I hope that you found this video interesting. Have you played around with Wasm lately? And have you run any projects using Wasm uh, in a larger scale? Please tell me in the comment section down below. If you have any other comments or suggestions, leave them down there as well. I will read all comments. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.